everybody welcome back to my channel i do hope that you can hear me today is not a good day um i feel like my spirit is very lifted my my forward moving is very positive i know that i'm in god's hands but i think like my my body's in the gutter i'm in god's hands and my body's in the gutter so I thought I would just come on to share this part um, of of the journey. Um, if you're okay, I noticed now that the camera's a little crooked. So give me a second. If I could do this without knocking it off or turning it off, that would be great. Okay, maybe something like this. Professional. Professional. Ah, uh, good enough. No, let's just see what we can do here. Um, today, um, uh, Brace Jack Alicia. Sharon gave me this wrap. Oh my gosh, her friend Lisa calls it the study wrap. Hi, Lisa. I haven't seen you in so long. How's the kiddos? Um, not my friend Lisa. My friend Sharon has a friend Lisa. My friend Lisa has a friend Sharon. So it's very confusing to me. They know I'm blonde and now the cancer chemo brain is a real thing. So they just want to confuse me all the time. I'm just kidding. Um, um, my hair is a mess. I'm sorry. I'm getting a shower today, supposedly. And we'll see how that goes, but it's like sub 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 zero temperatures out there this morning. It's early. What's the weather out right now? It's currently clear and thirty six degrees. So it's thirty six degrees now. What does the temperature feel like? Feels like twenty eight. <laughs> so it's no longer sub zero because now it's almost eight o'clock. It was when we woke up. I think it was like, I think it was like seven, felt like two or something. I don't know. And I guess that's not sub zero either, but you guys know. It's not negative 55 like it is in Minnesota or whatever. <laughs> or negative 50. Is 55 is what she said? I don't know. Anyhow, good morning. My smile works a tiny bit this morning because my mouth is, this part of my mouth is getting better and now something's developing over here, which is just annoying, oh, right here, which is annoying. The bottom lip, I never really described the bottom lip to you because I've, you know, we've been so focused on the top and the bottom lip feels like it's got slices in it. Like almost like I took a piece of paper and did like a thousand paper cuts. Even when I put on the lip, treatment it just like that's when you can feel it when I just rub across the lips you can feel it so I try to like dab now um but there's still times when I do my treatment at night you can just feel it um on top of everything else I've had bloody noses and that's a kind of kind of a normal thing for me and I do a nose spray an allergy nose spray which is a side effect of anything you stick up your nose is potential nosebleeds. Um, and the dry air, even though we have a moisturizer, a purifier, oh gosh, cool mist humidifier vaporizer thingy here. Um, even though we have that, still just, just all this like gunky to gunk, gunk, gunk. And I'm sure, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that the treatments that I'm on are affecting my normal bodies, obviously. My body's normal systems. It's breakdowns. It's breaking down. I wonder if I could get you guys closer. Hey, bear with me. She's good. Down to my last four tissues. <laughs> I bought, I don't know if you guys watched the Walmart haul, but I was feeling good yesterday morning. I was feeling better yesterday morning. I wanted to do the whole because I just, I didn't want to just like talk. I'm sorry, my eyes. I actually, Jim found my allergy medicine on the ottoman this morning. 
which means it didn't make it into my mouth last night. And I kind of thought I dropped something and I couldn't find what was missing. And that probably is not going to help my situation. <laughs> anyway, I was talked about the lips this morning for the first time since this whole situation started. I had to do the mouthwash when I first woke up. It was really bad. Um, I do it. I've been just doing it before bed. It's prescribed to do once before each meal and before bed. I've told you guys before that when I started doing that, when it would wear off, I felt like my mouth was worse because I was eating foods that were irritating it. So until I learn all the foods that irritate it, sometimes it's acid, sometimes it's texture, sometimes it's uh, saltiness. Oh my gosh, I started to eat ham yesterday from Christmas. like. I froze all of this ham from Christmas and I put some in lunch portions and some in dinner portions and I tried to eat some lunch ham yesterday and it was so salty that it burnt my mouth like so chips are out you know it's just that kind of stuff let's see I get this is why I'm living on pudding and jello and scrambled eggs because oatmeal and scrambled eggs it's okay though. I, I it's okay. I can stand to just have calories. It's gonna really be okay. I I promise. <laughs> it made me coffee in a regular cup today, so I had to sit in the chair. Oh, I'm his person. Mm. So sorry. I had to wait for it to get cooled off. I wanted to tell you guys a story. I had to call my sister right away after I got this. So Mary Ellen, Mary Ellen, thank you so much. Was sweet to send me. She's. I told you she sent me all these care packages. One of the packages had three um, oncology lip balms. That's what they called. Um, they're amazing. I don't know what's in them. They're in a chapstick type form, but they're super soft and they glide and they really have been helping heal. What I do, what my routine is now, and it seems to really be working is I do the Mary Kay lip scrub and lip balm at night. Um, while this was going on, I would just dab some Neosporin on it when it was like actively bleeding. And then during the day, I just use this, um, this uh, oncology this is the oncology lip balm the other thing is called the chemo the chemo inhaler and what it is is um it's supposed to take away the nausea um and it's got essential oils in it and it just it's just to inhale fragrance but i opened it and i inhaled it the first time just to see if i could tolerate it and I was immediately taken back to my Aunt Mary Doolittle's house. Yes, I had an Aunt Mary Doolittle. No, she wasn't a Doolittle when she passed away. She was a dryer, but still. <laughs> she, I feel like, was me. And, uh, you know, years ago, she didn't have any kids. She also had, like, hair loss. So we, we're 100% sure that she had some hormonal issues that they didn't know about back in the 20s and 30s. But one, um, when she was older, she lived in Queens. She had this little tiny house in Queens. And um, every once in a while we would go, my cousins too, but me and my mom would, not me and my mom, my mom and the kids, all of us would pile in the car, the van at the time, and we'd go grocery shopping for her. And, um, you know, when she became less, able to get out and get her, her things that she wanted i said to jane there's just some things that'll always be infamous with aunt mary doolittle um she always drank tang that was her beverage of choice she had jelly jar glasses you guys remember welch's jelly jar glasses um she always had those for the tank she would give us those um and she always had fudge ripple ice cream. That's what we would buy for her. Other things too, but it was always like whatever the meat of choice was, whatever the 
meal of choice was. It was always and tang and fudge ripple ice cream, which makes me think of her a lot because I, I love those things. I love ice cream. Can't really get fudge ripple anymore. It's honest weird. It's, I think they call it fudge swirl now, but they also put all their things in it all the time. But you just don't see fudge ripple anymore. And her apartment, her house was cute. It was one bedroom. A uh, typical Queen's bungalows type situation. It was like one bedroom off the living room. Um, when you walked in, you were looking straight at the kitchen. There was like a tiny hallway. You were looking straight at the kitchen. There was the bathroom at the tiny hallway. And then there was the bathroom straight into the kitchen, right into the living room. And then the bedroom. And I'm not trying to like sell you the house or anything. The reason I'm telling you that is because... Uh, I finally remember that Uncle Jerry, Jerry Dreyer, was um, her last husband. And when I was little, little, um, you try to go in the house, you try to like walk by and sneak by, and he try to grab you and tickle you and stuff. So it became like a game, you know. Um, she had like an old refrigerator. It's just, uh, just so much about the house. But anyway, I smelled this chemo inhaler and I was immediately transported back so she said Janie said I called Janie because Janie and I do a lot of this like memory she helps me sort out memories and I'll tell you another story in a minute if I can remember it if I can remember to tell it to you um I said Jane I got this sick and I smelled it immediately and I was taken back to Aunt Mary Doodle's house she said what did it do smell like mold I was like oh my gosh I said actually it's like lemon and lavender and chamomile maybe the chamomile smelled a little like mold I never really con you know thought about that but I was like it just you know you, your olfactory sense has got the the sharpest memory I believe I think I've heard that like you remember smells stronger than anything else. And I was immediately transported back to the times where we would go take care of her. Now she was my mother's father's sister. She was my, my mom's aunt, but on her father's side. And um, like I said, she had no kids. Um, she was older, she wasn't the youngest. She was older, um, I don't think she was older than my grandfather. She might have been, though. I have to look that up on the family tree. Um, but he didn't live very long. I think he died when he was 68 or 69. I think 68. I think both my grandfathers died when they were 68. I, I have that memory, and I also don't know that that memory is 100% accurate. So, um, it was just amazing. Like, not only did I receive this amazing gift, gift from Mary Ellen, but then I was, it, it brought back so many memories. And... I was thinking that um, I am I am my Aunt Mary Doolittle. I'm proud to be it. Um, the other, I called Janie yesterday because I, like I said, I often call her about memories. Um, so I've told you guys in the past that I never really heard my mom say that she was at, like that you did a good job and she was proud of you but you would hear it like as she was I heard over her her like talking to people on the phone how proud she was of me but she didn't I don't know she didn't express it to me or that was my memory so I said to Jane I called her up because yesterday morning at breakfast Jim came to me and he said somebody said to go look at the video you made about me and I was like okay and he goes starts to get like a little emotion he goes he goes thank you it was really nice to hear that you know you're so grateful for me I said Jim I tell you thank you and I'm grateful for you every single day and he goes yeah I know and I was like but it's nice to hear that I'm telling other people it is that it and he's like yeah and I was like of course I do of course I do I say I'm so grateful to have you and I'm so blessed to have you in my life and I say it all the time. I don't know where I would be without him. Obviously not here. <laughs> we never would have picked Missouri. I never met my husband, but I was like, I 
I love you and I don't know how to get through this without you and I couldn't do any of it without you and you're just amazing. But then I started to realize that perhaps I had done the same thing to my mom. Had I had a false memory that I only remember when she was telling other people when she was proud of me or did I remember correctly and she just really didn't ever say it um so I had to call her and I'm sorry I need lipstick I had to call her and see which was the case and she said nope she said she really did have a lot of trouble expressing um that type of thing my mom um had a lot of childhood trauma excuse me forgive me Give me hold on and alicia if this is making you cry i'm sorry um my mom had a lot of childhood trauma and one of the things that we know now in 2022 is sorry See, looks like that. It's really good. I highly recommend. 10 out of 10. Um, one of the things we know now in 2022 is that we, we, I don't have kids, but people were t like, if you don't consciously stop your generational trauma, you just pass it on to the next generation. So even though that, you know, we, we had other types of abuse that she didn't have. Um, we didn't, you know, we still felt her trauma. Like, we had our own traumas, but we felt her trauma. And she just said, she said, you know, her mom worked all the time because her, their dad left. And, well, their dad was, and, uh. She just didn't know how to do it. And we always say she did the best she she did the best she could with the tools that she had. And truly that's that's the truth. My both of my parents, you know, my father was a, a son of immigrants. And though his mom came here when she was very little, so she pretty much lived in the United States her whole life. His dad came here as an adult. Um, so they had, you know, language, um, issues. It was, you know, it was a different time. My father was born in 38, so it was a different time. And then, you know, then World War II happened and life in America changed and life in the world changed really, but life in America changed and, uh, oh boy, that's, that's getting better, isn't it? Huh? Let me just make a part right there. There you go, guys. So you just watch the street go down the middle. <laughs> sorry um so it's just a lot of like he had different type of trauma because it's kind of weird that you don't really realize that your home life isn't normal until you compare it to others so like until you watch the Brady Bunch they all had breakfast every morning together and it was always like waffles and juice and like, here we are, like, we don't get breakfast today because there's no milk and no cereal. There's cereal, no milk. There's no bread for toast and there's butter and bread and no butter. And it's like whatever it was, you know. Um, and it wasn't like that every day. I don't want to, please don't get the delusion that my, my, my life was, I was a starving child. It was just, I was, we were definitely food insecure. Let's just put it that way. We definitely were, um struggling uh for nutrition let's put it that way um but um we didn't know that we were missing out on i mean you felt a hungry belly well you didn't know we were missing out on what was normal um 
till you other you compare not compare yourself but till you look at other people you're like oh other people do sit around the table like the Brady Bunch and and then you think like oh that's just other people not my family and then you go to your cousin's houses and not necessarily my cousins that are in Island Park because they have they kind of they had more food than we did but they kind of had the same thing like they didn't eat all together unless they were all leaving at the same time or whatever um, but my cousins, when I went to California and they all sat down to dinner every night and said grace and everything together, I started to eat and my uncle was like, oh no, we say grace in this house. So I was like, oh, we say it in our house too, which is usually every man for himself. <laughs> um, I was like thinking to myself, I already said it. Thank you. <laughs> but you, you know, then you're like, oh, it's not my family. It's my family. And uh, the combination of my mother and my father did make some beautiful people, like physically attractive. And I'm not talking about myself. I know people think that I'm pretty, but I'm nowhere near anywhere compared to like my brothers and sisters. Um, no, I know I'm beautiful. That's not even what I'm talking about. But my sisters are gorgeous. Even my brothers, my brothers were so handsome um it's just it's just that particular combination made beautiful people but neither one of them had the parenting skills and one of the things we real I realized yesterday talking to my sister was that it was very difficult for my mom to get my father to go places like fam like uh, school events and stuff like that. But once she passed away, we realized that that's when he stepped up and just not even like, I think that he felt like the parents were represented. So mom's going to go. And um, that was enough. He could show his pride in other ways. You know, that was enough. So as soon as she passed away, that's when he stepped up and started doing things, started going places and, and, and representing the parents, which I thought was pretty, pretty awesome, actually. Um, do you feel bad for the generations that came before me that, um, like, you know, he went to Rob's graduation, but not like my sisters and I don't know if he went to my brothers, but, um, I said to my sister yesterday, I said, you know that expression, like you're today years old. I was today years old when I learned this. And I said to her, I was like, I was f almost 40 years old when I heard you stand up at daddy's funeral and say, daddy had three kids, Rob, Lucky, and the girls. And it was the first time that I heard it. And it made perfect, perfect sense. And... One of the things we talked about yesterday was one of the things that I share with you guys all the time. Choosing happiness, choosing how you deal with your trauma, choosing how you deal with life situations, whether it's cancer, arthritis, um, diabetes, um, divorce, loss of a child, loss of a spouse, um, loss of a parent, loss of a brother or a sister. No matter how things get thrown at you, it's how you receive them, it's how you catch them that makes a difference. Look, if you're playing softball, and I hate to use sports analogies, but if you're playing baseball or softball, think about it. Even if you've never played, you've watched. If you don't put your glove up and catch it properly, protectedly, then you're gonna get a ball right in the face and that, or in the chest or worse. Um, it's, it's how you receive it. If you catch it with your bare hand, that's going to hurt like a son of a gust. And that's one of the reasons that like God is my baseball mitt. Wow. That was a really weird analogy, but Jesus is my baseball mitt <laughs> because with God in my life and with Jesus in my heart, I can, I can take things and I can choose how I'm going to respond to them. You can't choose how people talk to you, you can only choose how you respond to it. Now, um,
I don't always respond correctly. I'm only a human being. Um, and then sometimes it's overwhelming. Like when my brother passed away, those emotions were overwhelming. I had so much different stuff to deal with. But eventually I realized that it's not on me anymore. So I have to let it go. Blooper reel. Okay. I've decided that with my brother, I have, there's nothing I can do. I can't rewind time. I can't uh, beat myself up for doing anything differently. And I do sometimes, sometimes I want to. Sometimes I say, um, I sit and I go, oh, if I wouldn't have hung up with my sister. Uh, I was FaceTiming with my sister Alicia the Wednesday before my brother died, like two days before my brother died. And he was going to a funeral, ironically, and she was waiting for him to come and they were gonna drive together. <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> I was FaceTiming her and she was in the car and I saw him coming, like I saw his body and I was like, bye. Cause what I didn't want to have happen, I was protecting myself. Cause what I didn't want to have happen was for him to get in the car and then like for me to hear or see how much he doesn't like me. Like I don't want, I've, I've get it enough in the ign him ignoring me but I don't need to know it like from his mouth does that make sense like I I know it um subliminally I don't need to know it like lingually I just don't need to hear it so I hung up and I realized <clears throat> at first I started to like I could regret that because it could have been the last time I talked to him um at least I got to see him walk that's just, that's important and then I wonder sometimes if the last time we talked if he would have felt reconciled if he wouldn't have felt like maybe he felt something maybe he felt like it was too late to reach out to me or something I don't know so I can't go back in time that's why I've gone you know I've have to let it go because I can't go back in time I can't change anything I can't fix anything I can't make any different decisions because I can only learn from it and move forward in the future and <clears throat> and that's what I'll do, you know? Um, so I really do enjoy talking to my sisters. Um, I love talking to my friends, don't get me wrong. They have a whole different uh, energy they give me. But, but talking to my sisters really makes me feel less alone. Uh, <clears throat> um, and I'm not alone. Jim's here mom's here I just meant like the times where I'm you know laying here by myself you know people are like you watch a lot of tv and I'm like I really don't my brain doesn't focus well on new information it's having a lot of trouble focusing on new information so I literally watch old movies like and I don't mean like Casablanca I mean like 27 dresses my husband comes in the other day he's like 27 dresses again and I was like yeah I don't really have to watch it it's just company you know it's just on and it keeps me going and it actually helps the time fly because when you listen to familiar songs or watch a familiar movie even though they still are just like two hours long they, it's two hours goes by really fast because the pace you know like the pace of your life do we always want two hours to go by really fast no but when you're home alone you don't feel good yes we do. We do want that to go by very fast. <laughs> <clears throat> so, yes, I agree. A hundred percent. That I look gross today. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I really feel gross, so it's okay. And I don't mean feel, again, my spirit. But I kept saying to yesterday, but I was like, how do you feel? I was like, thumbs up for my spirit, thumbs down for my body. Or, <clears throat> my... I had, an, I had a, a, a meme or GIF, actually, a GIF, whatever you want to say, a GIF uh, conversation with my niece. She said, how do you feel? And I showed like a, a, a smiley face bowl getting rolled over by a steamroller. And while the steamroller was rolling over it, it made it into a frowny face. Um, and then I shared the 
really slow steamroller bit from Austin Powers where the guard was like standing there for like 10 minutes, not getting out of the way. <clears throat> then I showed um, <laughs> a girl patting a dog's butt as it was pooping because that's what I felt like. And then um, a character from one of the Cartoon Network shows like, and I, I don't remember the name of it. It's kind of like, <clears throat> I wasn't in my, I wasn't actively in a family member's life that was in that age that watched those cartoons. So I don't know that character, if that makes any sense. Um, so I just show like this character is like laying in bed and he's like, mm. you know, I felt that's how I feel. I just feel that way. And then I found a penguin with a, with a rubbing his tummy um, with Ivy in him. And I just sent this group of, of gifts along because that's how I felt. And that's how I feel today. Now, is that going to stop me from doing things? No. Did it stop me yesterday? No. You watch the videos. Well, one. <clears throat> I think I'm going to throw the other one up. It's very small. I don't even know if I'm going to share it, actually. I ordered some Valentine's Day stuff. I realized I'm probably not going to get out for Valentine's Day stuff. So, I saw that they had it available. And because it's so early, <clears throat> excuse me, relatively early in the season, I thought it would be a good chance to get things and it came across the bottom of the Walmart page. So it's like, oh, look what we have recommended for you. And they showed all these like flowers from the craft section. I was like, oh, how pretty, like pretty expensive, inexpensive too. I like the $4 Walmart flowers a lot. The $3.97 Walmart flowers. They usually are much better quality and get more than the Dollar Tree. And I don't diss the Dollar Tree's flowers. You know, I love them. But sometimes it's nice to pay a little bit extra to get something that's a little bit more quality. <clears throat> so, um, I got some flowers, uh, some flowers yesterday. And then I was along that whole thing down there and it showed the Valentine's Day stuff. And I found the cutest stuffed animals for just $4 each. Right? $3.98 or $2.98. It might have been 2 I don't know. I don't know. They're a little low, but they're so cute. And, um, um, uh, some of Jim's favorite candies. So he likes Reese's peanut butter cups when they come out with trees and pumpkins and hearts because that p ratio of peanut butter to chocolate, he likes that a lot. So I got him some of those peanut butter hearts and some bunch of crunch because that's his favorite. Mm -hmm. You couldn't get cards, though. I don't know. I'm going to have to try to figure out how I'm going to get a Valentine's Day card. Um. Hmm. You can go on Hallmark.com anyway. But. I don't know. Maybe I'll ask. Maybe I'll ask Mom. I might actually have some, so I have to check the card box first, but. Because every once in a while I buy a couple that are really ring true and I only end up giving them one, so. And Valentine's Day cards aren't dated. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day 2022. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, I don't know if I'm going to share it because it wasn't very long, but I might. Um, but they had, they were out of a few things, which is like, eh. And I got some Valentine's Day decor that was pretty inexpensive, so. And they were out of some things, like I said. Um, oh. I just got a wave of not feeling good again. It came over me. Hmm. Let's move that back for a second. See if I can't find it. This is the this is the thing I was telling you about. It's called I should put glasses on right now. Chemo relief. That's what it says. Chemo relief. And it's an inhaler like like a Vix inhaler. This thing. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's almost just like our house. It's so weird. It helps, though. Mary Ellen, thank you. It really does help. She said these things were highly recommended. They had really good reviews on 
on uh, Amazon, so I wish I had links to things. I should find links to things for you guys because that would be very helpful of me to be a resource, right? It's taken everything out of me just to get these videos up. <laughs> Um, but side note, before I end, I just wanted to give a shout out to my nephew, John Thomas, who doesn't watch my videos, but my, his mom does. Um, John Thomas is, uh, started a YouTube channel where he does mukbangs, which is basically tries different foods, you know, eats the different foods on camera and then gives his little review about it. He is learning his editing skills and video quality is really so good that on his first video, I said, Oh, this is great. Now get your butt to Missouri and help your aunt because I can't see you doing nothing or anything right. So um, that's one of the reasons why I can vlog so easily. Because even if there's an edit, like the middle of this video had me blowing my nose and you won't see it. The reason that that edits are easy. What I do is I kind of like wave my, now I'm just going to mess my editing up. But I wave my hand in front of the camera to show as I'm scanning through where the edit point is. Um... But I'll know the first one is that at point. And then it's fairly simple from there. But what he does is like cutaways and like great in text insert and everything. It's just, he's really good. Um, so it's putting Ellington, if anybody's interested, um, just to support him would be great. Just to go over and give him some love. Um, He deserves it. He's gone through a lot, so. Um, yeah, that's it. Love you. Uh, remember, nobody's told you today that you are loved. I love you, and you can come here and get it. Every day. Um, actually, it's funny, because the video you guys saw this morning, which was yesterday. <laughs> I had Jimmy come up during the end and give me snuggles and I totally forgot to tell you I loved you because sometimes he snuggles me and it hurts it's not his fault he just his his gruff sometimes is really like scratchy and my skin is super sensitive lately um so I was trying to like rush through to say goodbye um I love this I love the snuggles but it's got to be like you know Put your beard here and your I'll lay on your chest or whatever it is or um if he lays on my chest then it's make sure i have a blanket on or something a nightgown on or something so because i i feel i've been like breaking out in rashes because of his beard which i love his beard so i don't want to do that and i don't he doesn't even know this i'm sorry i know he doesn't watch this so don't say anything to him because i don't want him to feel bad about anything that's happening um, it's just that I feel bad that I forgot to say I love you right away. And I had to like stop the camera. I stopped the camera and then I put the camera back on. I was like, oh, I forgot to tell everybody I love them. So, um, that's why I like, I have glasses on all of a sudden and then not. <clears throat> but anyway, sorry. Anyway, again, if you want to stop by every day, you can hear how much I love you. Cause I cannot tell you what it means to have you here. Um, walking beside me on this journey whether you came for cooking or came for crafting or came for cleaning or came for shopping whatever it was thank you for joining us and whatever brings you back every day I am overwhelmingly grateful I'm extremely extremely grateful God has put you before me and me before you and I'm sure there's a reason and we'll find it together okay and as always, you guys take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye. See, I'm starting to feel better already. Not really. But it sounds good. All right. Bye.